life cycle methods. This is probably one of the most popular interview questions where they ask you what the life cycle methods are of that specific framework. And we have a couple of them in Flutter, such as in its state, did change dependency, did update widget, deactivate and dispose. We're going to go through them one by one until we feel really confident on why this exists and when we can use them. If you like this kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel as well as checking out the website for signing up to the newsletter and let's get into it. Let's start with the most fundamental one, which is in its state. As the name suggests, this is the first lifecycle method that is called when the widget is created. This will actually be called before the build method. So here you can do initialization for these widgets, such as setting up animation controllers or state variables. Now let's switch back to the code and see how we can actually implement it. Here we have a basic application with a simple stateful widget as the homepage. We're going to start off by overriding the init state method. Now Visual Code likes to do this and it's adding this to do above the init state. I will move the to do down as if we check the init state documentation, the super.init state should be in the beginning of the call. So at this to do, we can make our different implementations. So an example of init state usage could be when we want to initialize a animation controller. Now for this example, to make animation controllers work is that we need to use the mixin single ticker provider state mixin. So now in init state, we can go ahead and initialize the animation controller. We're going to set it to a new instance of an animation controller. And inside the constructor of this, you will find something called vsync. And when we have vsync, we just assign it to this. Now we're just going to format this and move that to do above the animation controller. One more thing we're going to do here as well is just adding a print call. So later on we can see this print method being called. Now for the message we're just going to pass in its state here. Now moving over to did change dependencies, which is actually the second lifecycle method that is going to be called. This is called directly after init state and will be called for every dependency change. For example, we could change some variables depending on the theme as the theme is using inherited widget. Now to implement this, we're going to do the same as we did with init state. We're going to start writing did change dependencies and that will give us the autocomplete. Now in the documentation for did change dependencies, it doesn't give a guideline of whether the super call is going to be called before or after code. So if you have more knowledge of this, please let me know down in the comments. Just to showcase that this is going to be called directly after init state, we're going to add a print call just giving it the text did change dependencies. Just keep in mind that did change dependencies can be called multiple times, as it will be called directly after init state and then every time a dependency change. Now moving on to did update widget which is actually called whenever a configuration changes for that specific widget. That could be things like passing variables down the constructor and those variables update. A very common use case is when you pass a duration for a animation controller, as you then need to change the duration of that controller. Now, if we take a look at how we can implement the did update widget. Now, of course, if we check the documentation for it, it says that we should make sure that the super call is called first in this method. So let's just move that up and we can do our implementation of it. Now, first off, we're just going to add a print to this in the beginning with the text of did update widget. Now we're going to actually simulate a call so we can actually see this one happening. And the easiest way to do this is just passing a variable down to this widget. So in the my app, we're going to convert it to a stateful widget and we're going to create a method and a state variable. Now this method will be responsible for updating our state variable. And in this case, we want to be able to change the title when it's called. So we'll call it update title and then implement set state and then define a new state variable called title. We're going to assign it to something like flutter homepage. We're going to remove the final keyword here and use set string as we're going to reassign it in set state. 
Now to make this simple, we're going to reassign this title to new Flutter homepage. Now it's not much left. We just have to pass this title variable down to the homepage. So we're going to do that and replace the initial title. What we also have to do is actually pass this update title method down to the homepage. We can call it down below. And to do this, we're going to create a void callback and just name it to something like on pressed. We pass that to the constructor, making it possible to actually pass that method down. So now scrolling up to my homepage, we can actually just pass the on pressed down. Now, if we scroll down to the did update widget method, to make this very obvious, we can make a if call in here. And inside here, you actually have a reference to the current widget as well as the old widget before we actually got this call. So what we can do is actually compare the new widgets title compared to the old widgets title. And if they are different, we're just going to make a print call. So when we actually call the method, this print call will be called as well as the widgets title will actually change. We're going to scroll down to the build method so we can add a new button there. The only reason for this button is just to call that method that we actually created and passed down here. So now if we actually check this out, we can see that if I refresh this page, we have a init call and then we have a did change dependencies call. And when the button is pressed, we can see that the did update widget is called and then our print for the title has changed. You can also see the updated title in the app bar. Now moving on to the deactivate method, which is called when this object is removed from the tree. Now do not confuse this with the dispose method and dispose your variables in here, as this can be called when, for example, moving the widget in the widget tree using a global key. Now taking a quick look at the deactivate method, we implement it the same way as we did with the other ones. Now this is a bit different and the to-do is actually correct here. The super call is actually going to be at the bottom of this deactivate method. And as the other ones, we're going to add a print call so we can visually see it. And in the print call, we'll just pass deactivate. Now I haven't needed to use this for over two years in Flutter. So if you have, please let me know down in the comments. Now moving on to the last one, which is dispose. And this is called when the object is removed from the tree permanently. And this is where you actually want to do all your dispose logic. One example of when this is called is when you call the navigator.push replacement and actually replace the current widget with another one. Now, if we take a look at implementing dispose method, this is the same as with deactivate. We actually have the super call at the bottom of this method. We're going to add a print, and this print we have dispose. Now if you remember with the init state, we actually created a animation controller. And this is the most important part with dispose. And it's that we have to dispose of those objects. That could be things like animation controllers, timers or streams. And there's of course a lot more than those. So if we call our animation controller, we have the dispose method, which we will call here. If we don't call these things, we could have memory leaks in our applications. Now to simulate a call for the dispose method, we're going to add a button and this button is going to call the push replacement on the navigator and we're going to push a new page. This one will just be called example route page, which is just the most simple stateless widget you can think of. Now if we actually take a look at the results, here we can see of course the init state and did change dependencies. And if we click our did update widget, we can see that those prints are called as well. And then for the dispose, when we push replacement, we can see that the deactivate is called as well as the dispose. And now we have made sure that that animation controller is actually disposed. Now you should have enough knowledge for those interview questions about lifecycle methods. If you like this kind of videos, please let me know by subscribing to the channel, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, and of course checking out the website. A special thanks to my supporters on Patreon and if you would like to support me there you can check out the link in the description. Other than that thank you for watching this video and make sure to check out one of these other videos coming up on the screen right now.